show you how to make one of the panels out of the Gnome Runner from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of invisible mesh stabiliser, a selection of threads, some pins with heads on them, masking tape, my squizzers and my fabrics and batting cut to size. And because I'm going to be using a faux fur for his beard, I'm also using some, sol some Solvi Topper, which is a clear water soluble stabiliser that you use on top of any fabric that's got a pile or a nap. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with another video link for completing your project and turning it into a runner. You're going to start off by hooping your two layers of uh, invisible mesh stabiliser. And then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop to stop our stabiliser from being pulled down between the two hoop parts during stitching. So take a pin, rest it on the inside hoop, push it through your two layers of stabiliser bring it round and back through the stabiliser again and that will anchor it and you're going to do that on all four sides the larger your hoop the more pins you will use so load your file into your machine along with your thread colour that you're going to use for the quilting of the background and then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. I'm using a darker thread just so that you can see what I'm doing. Normally I would use white as my uh, fabric is white and I would be using a white thread with it. Place your fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. Trim away the excess batting from around the edge of the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. Place your background fabric over the outline and I do advise you to try and get it as central as possible so that you've got plenty of seam allowance for constructing your um, runner either that or just cut your fabric slightly larger um, than um, indicated by about half an inch then tape it in place Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabric and it's going to give you uh, an outline of the gnome. We're going to do the heart background quilting around here. So we're now going to stitch round number four. If you're going to be um, placing light fabrics on dark and you uh, are worried about them showing through, we can now trim out the center of um, where the gnome outline is just to get rid of the fabric in that area. If you're putting um, a light fabric down like I have, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just place your fabrics from here on in over the top. I'm going to show you how it's done, so I'm going to trim mine out. So just make a little slit in your fabric and trim around the edge but don't cut your batting out of this area you just want to cut the fabric
We're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to give us um, our placement outlines for all our different fabrics over the gnome. So I'm going to swap to a darker thread colour so that you can see what's happening. Place your fabric for his robe over these areas here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six to secure it. I'm going to be using a silver thread for stitching all my fabrics down because after we've stitched it it's going to zigzag it as well and it's a nice neutral colour um, that shouldn't show through on any other coloured threads that I use. We're now going to stitch round number six. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of both stitch lines, taking care not to cut your stitches. Now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag the edges of the robes. We're now going to add our fabric for the beard so place your fabric over the outline and if you're using a faux fur I strongly um, advise you to use a solvy topping or solvy topper over the top um, which is a clear wash away stabiliser that we will remove afterwards it will just tear off um, and that will stop your foot getting caught up in the pile of your fur so place that over the top and tape it in place and I'm going to put a little bit on the edges as well load your thread colour for the beard into your machine if you need to and then you're going to stitch round number eight I'm staying with silver for this trim away the excess fabric and solve your topper from around the edge of the beard Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag around the edge of the beard. Place your fabric for his hat over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number ten to secure it. And I'm staying with silver for this still. load your thread colour for the quilting pattern on his hat into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 11 I'm using a dark blue if you don't want to uh, stitch the quilting you can skip this colour of course we're now going to stitch round number 11 Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the hat stitch line, taking care of course not to cut your stitches. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 12 and that's going to zigzag around the edge of his hat. Place your fabric for the heart over this area here and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 13 and I'm still staying with silver for this. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line of the heart, taking care of course not to cut your stitches.
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 14 and that's going to zigzag the edge of the heart. Place your fabric for his hands and nose over those three areas and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 15 to secure it. And I'm staying with silver still. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the hands and the nose, taking care not to cut your stitches. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 16 and that's going to zigzag around the edges of the hands and his nose. Load your thread colour for the letter in the centre of the heart into your machine and then stitch round number 17 and I'm going with a, a pale cream colour. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of his robes into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 18. I'm going to give you a little tip. Up till now I've been using a white bobbin thread but I'm going to be using a dark blue for the satin stitching of his robes so that I don't um, get any little white bits sh uh, showing through on the top. And I just wind it from my top thread. So we're now going to stitch round number 18. Load your thread colour for his beard into your machine and then stitch round number 19. And I've loaded um, a white bobbin and thread into my machine for this. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of his hat into your machine and then stitch round number 20. I'm going with dark blue as I did for the robes so I've also loaded a matching bobbin as well so that I haven't got two high contrasting colours together. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching around the heart into your machine and then stitch round number 21. I'm going with black. Load your flesh coloured thread into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 22 and that's going to do the satin stitching around his hands and his nose. I've swapped out my bobbin from dark to light. Now that all of stitching is done, we can remove the solvy topper from his bit from the top of his beard. So I'm just going to pull that off. And now we can fluff up his beard a little bit. I just take a, a pair of uh, my squizzers, keeping them closed at all times. Just um, hook it underneath the, the fur and just pull it up. And that, all you're doing is pulling the fur out from underneath the satin stitching.
We're now going to free this from the hoop. So as I always do, I turn my hoop over and I trim around the stitch line, taking care not to cut my fabric underneath. And that's my panel complete. So once you've stitched out all your panels, you're going to want to join them all together. And I've got a few more panels here that I've already stitched out. And what you want to do is place them face down, one on top of the other, and you want to align the um, corner stitches on both uh, panels and then you're going to pin them together and do the same at the top you've got two lines of stitching on the back You've got the outer border, which you can see from the front, and then you've got the inside one that stitched down your batting. And you're going to want to stitch along the inside one because then um, it's invisible and your outer um, stitch line won't show through when you um, seam it. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to do the same with the other one. And then I'll come back and explain what you need to do to finish off your runner. Once all your panels are sewn together, you then have to decide whether you're going to, do, to add any sashing. And I am going to add some sashing to this one. I'm not going to show all the stitching, but I'm going to show you how to piece it together. And they are literally just straight seams, so there's nothing complicated. So I've cut four pieces of fabric and these are four inches wide or 100 millimeters for those in metric like me and then I've pressed them in half and I've got two for the sides and I've got two pieces for the top and bottom. So one there. And they are oversized, I won't worry about that because I will be trimming it later. Always give yourself plenty to work with, that way if you make a mistake it's easy to rectify. Okay, so now that I've got my strips cut and pressed, I'm going to attach the side pieces and I'm going to place them, because I've doubled them over, um, They there's no... Um, right or wrong way and I'm going to place them and align them to the edge of my panel and then I'm just going to pin that in place and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and I've got the fold facing towards uh, the center of my runner so the raw edges on the outside against the raw edges of the panel and pin it in place and then as we did earlier when we stitched these panels together I have pressed my seams outwards so that they lay nice and flat you're now going to stitch along the inside stitch line like you did for joining them and that's going to uh, attach your sashing strips I'm going to go and do that now okay so I've stitched these on I'm just stitched all the way up here on both sides and then I put my ruler across the top and um, I just uh, trimmed it off so that it's all level both top and bottom 
Now we're going to do exactly the same with the top and bottom sashing. So take your fabric with the fold towards the center, place it all the way along and pin it in place. You can use clips if you prefer, it really doesn't matter which. And then exactly the same on the bottom, so the fold facing upwards and give yourself a little bit of waist allowance on the ends. And then I'm going to stitch this. I will remove the pins as I stitch anyway, so I'm not worried about them being on the other, other side for a minute. And then you're going to stitch this all the way along on the inside stitch line, which was uh, to secure the batting. And you're going to do that both top and bottom. So I'm going to go and do that now. So I've stitched my uh, top and bottom sashing on and then after that you're going to press it up so that it all lays nice and flat and then you're going to cut a piece of fabric exactly the same size as your runner with the sashing and then just pin everything in place. If you're using a really thin cotton fabric, I would advise you to, for your sashing, I would advise you to put some um, thermal stabiliser on the back, just so that it doesn't stretch. I didn't do it on this and I should have done, and that's why it looks a little bit wavy, but it'll be fine in the end. And you can do a better job of pinning than I do. <laughs> so once you've got your backing fabric pinned in place, you can then just go around the edge using a really, really small seam allowance to stitch it in place if you prefer. You could, if you wanted to, bind it straight away, but you'll probably find it easier to stitch your backing fabric onto your runner first. And that's what I'm going to do next. So that's my backing fabric attached to the runner. And next I'm going to bind it. I'm not going to show you how in this video, because I've got a separate video that I will link in the video description below for that for you but I will show you the finished um, runner and that's my binding added so there's the back let me know what you think of my runner I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published do pop along to Creative Kiwi's Facebook group there's always lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me You'll find a link to this design in the video description below, along with lots of other information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you too, along with a link to my video on adding sashing and binding to your projects. Take care and I'll see you next time.